Sammy Smith of Florida State stumbles at the start. It's Troy Aikman of UCLA sprinting away to the early lead, followed closely by Rodney Pete of USC. Then it's Steve Walsh of Miami on the inside in third, followed by Bobby Humphrey of Alabama. The middle of the pack is tightly bunched with Emmett Smith of Florida, Tom Hudson of LSU, Major Harris of West Virginia, all running well early, followed by the long shot Barry Sanders of Oklahoma State, and after that slow start, Smith now brings up the rear. It's a lively pace for the first quarter. Now Aikman draws away to a commanding full-length lead with that thrashing of Nebraska. But here comes Rodney Pete with a bold move up to challenge. An awesome display of speed and guile against the mighty Sooners. The two leaders have opened up some ground on the rest of the field. Steve Walsh in good position, still running smartly in third. And it appears that Bobby Humphrey has broken down, yes. Bobby Humphrey has pulled up. What a tough break for Bill Curry and the Crimson Tide. They're at the midway point in the contest, and it's still Aikman and Pete showing the way neck and neck. But here comes Barry Sanders, making a tremendous move on the outside with dead aim on the leaders. As they come to the top of the stretch, the battle on the front end has Aikman and Pete head and head. But it's Sanders, the strong one, rallying from third, really pouring it on and closing the gap. Now Walsh from the Hurricanes finds his best stride in fourth. And here comes Major Harris as well. But it's still Rodney Pete and Troy Aikman dueling stride for stride at the top of the stretch. What a confrontation in the Rose Bowl. USC and UCLA and down the stretch they come. Pete now pulling away from Aikman as Barry Sanders with a late burst of speed moves into the second spot. They're in the final furlong. Barry Sanders on the outside. Rodney Pete right with him trying to hold on against the final. Fighting Irish, a driving photo finish. This one is down to the wire. All right, Dave Johnson, and thank you so much for that great stretch call. And although it really wasn't a photo finish, the race for this year's Heisman was as memorable as ever. Hello, I'm Tim Brando. Bino Cook is alongside, and Kerry Ross is in New York, where the Heisman rests year after year. Unlike last year when Tim Brown was clearly the leader early in the season, this year's group of collegiate stars were many, and at different times during the year, potential frontrunners emerged. In the next half hour, we'll introduce you to the winner, Barry Sanders of Oklahoma State. But we won't forget the others that made certain the bashful Oklahoman would have to earn the favor of the downtown athletic club. Barry Sanders was in Tokyo for a game against Texas Tech when the announcement was made that he had won the Heisman Trophy. Typical of Sanders' style, he accepted the news with great humility. Oh, it's something that I can take with me for a lifetime. You know, I, I certainly had a lot of help uh, doing so. And, you know, it's something that, you know, I, everyone can be proud of, you know, as far as the team is concerned. And, uh, you know, with... We can't, you know, uh, really think about it right now. You know, I, I'll have time to really think about it and so let it soak in after the game today. Barry may be exceptionally humble, but his father makes up for it. He's one of Barry's greatest fans who is very proud of his son's accomplishments. I'm so proud of what's happened to Barry. I know, I know Barry, Barry don't want it. If he, if he wants it, he wants it for his father, because you know how I feel about him and my, and my friends back home in Wichita. But, I, but for himself, I don't, I don't think, I don't think he care about it for himself. You know, my parents have been very inspirational. My brothers and sisters, all of them, you know, they, they're big fans of mine. They support me 100%. This is an award for your teammates? Yeah. Yeah, it is, you know, especially my offensive line, my fullback. You know, that's something we can all take with us, you know, for a lifetime. This year, the Heisman has certainly regained its luster, especially for those who felt the award in recent years had been won with preseason hype. Barry Sanders did not have all the national TV exposure like Troy Aikman and Rodney Pete. He emerged as a candidate in midseason and then rushed his way to the top. I think he probably was at a disadvantage with coming into the year, uh, not being on national TV that much, uh, not having any uh, type of candidacy coming into the season, and um, not with the, the widespread media attention that, that I did receive in Los Angeles. So for him to be able to come in and do the things he did without having any of the credentials or what criteria that a lot of the voters look for is amazing. And, uh, and I think finally a guy won the award on just your ability and without having to receive any uh, publicity from, that, from outside. I think pretty much everyone knew that Barry Sanders was probably going to win the trophy, and I, I'm just happy for him. My congratulations goes out to him. 
Um, but for me, uh, it was exciting to be back here and to finish second. I'm thrilled. Um, you know, I can't believe I'm here. Uh, I wasn't expecting to win it, win it this year. You know, I just came up here and I just wanted to have a good time and meet some of the, you know, better guys in the country. This is one of those rare years when the race for the Heisman truly came down to the wire. But remember, Barry Sanders is just a junior, and he has a great shot at doing what only one other player has ever done in college football history, win the Heisman twice. Ohio State's Archie Griffin stands alone in that category. He won it in 1974 and 75. You can bet, however, that this year's finalists, Major Harris and Steve Walsh, will be back next year to challenge Barry Sanders for the Heisman once again. All right, Kerry, thank you very much. And there are those that believe that uh, Barry Sanders may not be around for his senior year because it's likely Oklahoma State uh, is going to be a team on probation. But I want to talk to you about the credibility factor, Bino Cook, of the award going to a player that really didn't get any advanced type. Yes, this is a player who played, in Oklahoma, at, played at Oklahoma State, which is like being governor of Montana and <laughs> wanting to be president. Very tough to win the Heisman Trophy. But he won it, and I think the fans wanted mm -hmm. somebody from a school like this. And you believe the technology in television today versus 10 years ago okay. is uh, responsible for yeah, this victory. Yeah, 25 years ago, he doesn't win because nobody ever sees him. The first player to win the Heisman Trophy benefiting television, Billy Vessels, 1952. He scored three touchdowns against Notre Dame, and although Oklahoma lost 27-21, Billy Vessels won the game, won the Heisman Trophy because of that performance on television. The dishes, the cables, and all of the highlights that you see nightly on ESPN, yeah, CNN, yeah. and the like, likely responsible as well. Unlike many Heisman winners, Barry Sanders' season was not keyed by any one given play in a given game. Rather, a season filled with superlatives. Here's a capsule of Barry's Heisman run that covered more yards than ever before. It all started like a fairy tale. Game one, September 10th, Barry Sanders against Miami of Ohio, taking the opening kick back for a touchdown. He had done the same thing the year before. He set the tone for the season to come, scoring three touchdowns and rushing for 178 yards, stats that would become mediocre in the ensuing weeks. Game two in the Cowboys hosted Texas A&M and Sanders romped for 157 yards and three touchdowns. Then Tulsa came to town and Barry ran beyond anyone's wildest expectations. 304 yards and five TDs. He was leading the nation in rushing, scoring, kickoff returns and all purpose running. Fellas, Barry just broke Thurman's record as far as the school rushing record. For, he broke the record that Thurman set against Iowa State last year with 293. I was 300 and something. Here's two. <laughs> Game four at Colorado. Sanders sailed to four touchdowns and 174 yards. He was virtually unstoppable. The next week, October 15th, was the big game as the Cowboys journeyed to Nebraska to confront one of the Big Reds. Though the Cowboys lost the game, his star continued to shine through that dark day. Sanders powered his way to 189 yards and four touchdowns against the Cornhuskers' powerful defense. Missouri came to Stillwater for game six. Defenses were cracking down on Sanders, but he had moves no one had seen yet. His ability to do the unexpected was amazing, no matter how well he was covered. 154 yards and two touchdowns, his worst performance of the year. The question had become how many yards over 100 would Sanders run? Game seven, he became the first running back in Big 8 history to have two 300-plus yard performances in the season. I think next week will be Barry's real test, quite honestly. I think, uh, I think if he, he plays like he has been playing uh, against the folks next week, let me put it this way, I think that is the, the true test coming up for him next week and this football team. The folks were the Sooners, and they proved they could beat the Cowboys even though they had Barry Sanders. Game eight, the first Saturday in November, Sanders carried his team from a 24-14 deficit at halftime to a 28-24 lead with two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Though they lost the game by three points in the final minutes, Sanders ran for 215 yards against the powerful Oklahoma defense. Our offensive line did a good job, but they're great players, and a lot of the holes he ran through were small holes, key holes, and he was running through, and he'd be in the secondary, and they have great athletes in the secondary, and he was just leaving them standing there. I mean, they were face up, and lots, two or three times they wouldn't even touch him. 
In game nine against Kansas, Sanders' season total reached 2,003 yards, a number only running backs Mike Rozier and Marcus Allen had surpassed in a single season. Because we just witnessed history. You know, there's been, there's a lot of guys that have played this game up to this point, and he just went by Rozier and, and Lydell Mitchell as far as touchdowns scored in a single season, and we've still got a couple of ball games left. The Cowboys went to Ames, Iowa, and Sanders continued to shine with 298 yards and four touchdowns. He's well on his way to dethroning Marcus Allen as the college football player with the single best season a college running back has ever had. Perhaps Troy Aikman did say it best a few moments ago. Barry Sanders is so humble, it is almost sickening, isn't it? But let there be no doubt, with Sanders, what you see is what you get. As Ron Thulin found out, this star wouldn't mind being the lonesome cowboy. And in this day and age, that's pretty refreshing. Barry Sanders' explosive style, his speed and determination belie the quiet, humble personality that lies beneath the cowboy helmet. The media hype and constant attention surrounding the awarding of the Heisman Trophy doesn't agree with Sanders' understated style and humility. How can you take one player out of college football and say he's the best, you know, and give him the trophy? Because look at all the down linemen, you know, it, even if a down lineman was more valuable to his team than a running back, they still give it to the running back, and uh, that, that's not fair. This cowboy is five foot eight, 197 pounds. He has rewritten the NCAA record book for rushing. In fact, his total yards rushing is more than the entire Notre Dame team running the football. It is because of that he has become a hero. He has also made his mark in the race for the Heisman. And that is a role that this shy and bashful cowboy reluctantly accepts. I think people uh, take this game too serious. You know, and, and uh, the hype and everything, it's just they, they make you seem as if you're different than everyone else, and that's the main thing that I don't like about it. He'll say things that, that lead people to think that he doesn't want the award, but inside, I know he does, I know him, and he wants it, and anybody that plays at this level, you know, would enjoy winning that. I just want an opportunity to play at, you know, Division One school and, and do well, but uh, it, it means, you know, something, but but right now, you know, I just want to go out and win these last two games. That, that means more to me, you know, to, to send these seniors off with a 10 and 2 record. And he's completely serious about that. In OSU's last home game against Kansas, though Sanders was fast approaching the single game rushing record, he took himself out. The, it, it, was, it was as bad as the crowd was chanting, Barry, Barry, they wanted him in. And, uh, you know, it really wouldn't have been that, that bad of a deal to put him in. We were beating him pretty good, but still, their offense is moving the ball, and, and anything could have happened. And uh, he wouldn't go back in. He wanted, it was the last home game for a couple of seniors on our team and running backs, and he wanted them to be able to go, go in and play at home. Barry's generosity and concern for his teammates most likely stems from sharing his parents' Christian upbringing with his ten brothers and sisters. I was brought up in church, you know, I'm from a large family. Uh, they, they just brought us up the way they, they thought we should, you know, the, good morals. Uh, you know, basically, I, I think the most important thing was, was the church background, though. You know, success, it really, it, it, it tends to, to, to tag and tug on you sometime. You know, you, you don't know which way to go, but, uh, it, you know, it's kind of hard to stay on the same level and, and not let things get to you. But uh, I think being a Christian, and knowing that um, I shouldn't try to take credit for everything. And, uh, you know, he's given me the ability to do what I've done. And uh, that's what helped so much. Barry Sanders, to me, Ron, is exactly what you would want your son to be if you want your son to be a wholesome youngster. Uh, and I think that's good. I think that we need some of that. I think in, in, in major college sports, we need some of that. Um, but again, Sanders is, I mean, he's very real. He is very real. I've played with him for three years and he's been in the huddle, you know, all this year and some of last year. And he's never, he never says anything. All, he, he runs and comes back and he never says a word, never says anything. And uh, sometimes I'll ask him, are you doing all right? You know, you tired? You need to go out? I just kind of check on him. He'll say, yeah, I'm fine. And that's it. He just never, never says a word, good or bad. But his fans certainly have a lot to say especially his father, who is infinitely proud of his son, as Barry has attained star status in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and Wichita, Kansas. And his name is about to be aligned with the best that ever played college football. 
Thank you, Ron. What a moment for the entire state of Oklahoma and Barry. Yes, uh, Oklahoma State definitely lives in the shadow of Oklahoma, which has Heisman Trophy winners, it seems, all the time. But for Oklahoma State, this is a great moment. And also, this proves that the recruiters don't know everything. <laughs> this kid was hardly yeah. recruited. I mean, nobody particularly wanted him, and he wins the Heisman Trophy.